All right, everybody. Hey, welcome. I hope you don't mind the, uh, we went back and forth. They're like, ah, we can fit in here. It'll be fine. Right. So you notice it's, Mike, how many, did you do some of these already? Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Right. It's still a little dark over here, but eventually it'll be super bright as the box says. Super bright. Right. Little, little white. It's, it's good. You know, I, I prefer like warm color temperature, the more, you know, yellowy light. Um, except for in here, because especially at like five, five o'clock with the catechumens after a long day at school or whatever, and they just, mm, you need, yeah. Or maybe after church, I don't know. You're a little sleepy. All right. Good. All right, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, you guide us in the way that we should go by way of your um, pastors, evangelists, apostles, and prophets. Uh, We ask that the liturgy would serve uh, in a similar way to guide us into and out of our faith in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So a little exercise to start us off. You got the sheet? That'll be fun. We can do this. We're like children, right? Let's review what we have learned. If you didn't get a sheet, they're back there, right? It says Gloria in Excelsis on it. We sing the glory in Excelsis after we pray. I know you know the answer. What, what, what are the words that we say? Not, it's called the Kyrie, but what is it? In English, bitta. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, right. In the, okay, Ethan has a historic note. He knows so much now that he went to college. Oh, Kyrie? Yeah. yeah, Lord. All right, so you're calling Jesus Caesar. Render to Caesar. Ah, oops. Um, in the Glory and Excelsis, we sing the same song that the blank sang to the shepherds. Angels. Yeah, and we'll sing it lots of different ways. Did we already sing some angel today, some of the shepherd song today? I don't think we did, right? Angel, we'll sing a lot of it on, on Friday. Angels we have heard on high. Hark the herald angels. I mean, like how many? Yeah, we didn't say what the angels sang. But actually, we sing, we sing Christmas every, every Sunday, except for Advent and Lent, when we omit the uh, glory and excelsis, right? All right, very good. Uh, what's next? We sing the song of the angels because in the blank, we entered into the presence of the Lord. In, the key there is entered into the presence. Remember, what have we, we're reviewing. Think about all the parts of the service up to the Gloria so far. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, you can't answer because you're the, you, you, might be the, you might be the next smartest person in the room, but <laughs> it's just like at home. I have to tell this to Leah now, you know, let the little people answer the questions. Right. Right. Okay, yeah, anyway, what is it? In the what? We, it means entrance. That's the key. Intro it. That's right. You have, to, you have to say louder. I can't hear you in the back. That's good. All right, yeah. Um, in the Glory Nick Chelsea's, it's actually two songs put together, by the way, we'll talk about. We confess that Jesus is the blank of God and that he sits at the blank of the Father and that he alone is the blank. All right. Confess that Jesus is the uh-uh, Lamb of God. Yeah, Lamb of God. That's right. We'll talk about it. It's a pro- like I told you last week, today, it'd be really appropriate to talk about it today. Now you'll see why. Um, and then that he sits at the what? Right hand of the Father, right? And that he alone is. Now you have to think about the song. Lord. Nope. All right, I'll, all right, let me let me pick one. I mean, there's a lot of different ones. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. This all sounds like the angel, right? We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, Lord God, Lord God, heavenly King. 
I didn't want to start too low. Right? O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. I'm not there yet. We're looking for this last word, right? Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy. Have mercy upon us, for thou only heart. Holy. Thou only art the Lord. You're really close. Thou only, O Christ. Yeah, thou, thou art holy. The answer is holy. All right. And then five, because of all the things that we confess that Jesus is, he will have blank on us and blank our prayer. <laughs> Sounds terrible saying blank and blank, right? It's like they're curse words or something. <laughs> oh, I can't say the word. Yeah. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Very good. All right. Revelation 5, 6 through 14. All right. And there's actually songs based on this too, aren't there? All right. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. And I found pictures of this. And they're pretty freaky. (laughs) Having seven horns and seven eyes. Yeah, that's a strange looking lamb. Uh, Which are, but here's the reason, the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. How far do I go? Dorothy. All right. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. All right. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was a few, a bit. No, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. What, how many is that then total? I don't think you're supposed to think about that. More than you can number. More than you can number. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, notice the whole creation is singing here, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. All right, we could really get lost in the weeds here. There's a lot of images, right? It's meant to conjure up all of this kind of fantastical vision, right? Um, And John is really big on numbers. This is, actually, if we were going to do this, if we were going to study Revelation, I learned this the last time I tried to teach it, is that you actually just need to go back and read Isaiah and Ezekiel especially Ezekiel, some of Jeremiah, you need to read the, the, the Old Testament shadow first. Otherwise, you have no idea what John's talking about. Right? And then that's when you end up with a whole book series right behind Bobby there. You see him with the black spine, which are what, like 15 books that sold billions of copies and that are all just made up nonsense. Right? Because they read Revelation without reading the rest of the Bible. So it's pretty easy to do. Not to pick on any particular, I mean, it's fun, they're fine, whatever. It's just fiction. You know, you know what was one of the most popular works of Christian fiction ever? After the Koran, true story, this is what John of Damascus said, and he was in the court of a Muslim king in the 7th century, right? So 100 years after Muhammad. But anyway, um, after the Koran, it's the Book of Mormon. Yeah, there's actually a theory about this. Yeah, that Joseph Smith stole the Book of Mormon from this guy who was uh, in upstate New York writing uh, Christian fiction. Anyway. I mean, that would make sense. 
So imagine like a thousand years from now, somebody will discover the Left Behind series and say it's the lost gospel of the New Testament. There's thousands of copies. It proves that Christians receive this as gospel truth. All right, anyway. What lunacy, yeah. All right, back to the beginning. Not in Utah. I went to Nauvoo oh, yeah. in Illinois. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, it was the angel Maroni. Yeah. And, and, um, Maroni. So of course he went to the American Indians. That's right. Other people who are not of my full flock. Yeah. They had the lost of so they claimed that that was how they got Yeah, they came across the land bridge and they're the lost tribe and da 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 da. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's nice, kind of, in a, like for science fiction or fantasy. But they're very generous people. This is really on a tangent. But imagine, imagine my family pulling up in a big white 12 passenger van in Mormon country and getting out. They're all like, you're a Mormon. As far as we know, you got one of our van. We all have white 12 passenger, 15 passenger vans. So it's brother this and brother that. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Not when you're in Mormon country. Yeah. They just assume. All right. Very good. Anyway, in this reading, we see a vision of heaven. I'll just read what it is, otherwise we'll talk forever. (laughs) The Lamb of God sits on a throne in heaven at the right hand of the Father. Around him are the people of God. They are singing, for you were slain and have redeemed redeemed us to God by your blood. We sing the same thing in the glory in excelsis. We confess that Jesus is the Lamb of God who sits at the right hand of the Father, and we confess that he takes away the sin of the world. He has mercy on us and hears our prayer. In the reading from Revelation, the people say that Jesus is worthy. By the way, worthy of is the Lamb. What, that's the song. Do you, know, do you know that song? Yeah. That's what it's actually called in Divine Service Setting 2. In Setting 1, it's called This is the Feast. Right? But it's the Revelation song. Um, traditionally, it was sung as, a, as the distribution during the Lord's Supper, during the season of Easter. So that's why we sing it during Easter. Um, I don't like to sing it in place of the Gloria, but... It says a lot of the same things, so I get it. But traditionally, it's, it's during communion, actually. Which makes sense, too, yeah. Uh, this is also why we confess what we say, or when we say that Jesus alone is holy. We are, turn the page, saying that Jesus alone is worthy and holy to save us from our sins and uh, to grant that we may be in heaven. No other man can save us because no other man is without sin no other, and no other man is God in human flesh. But why do we sing a song of heaven during church? Are we in heaven at church? Are we with the angels in church? Right? Author says, yes. In the liturgy, we hear that we are joining the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. We've talked about that, right? Right, that's the... Um, the proper preface, the proper preface, but we haven't talked about that yet. We cannot see it, but in the liturgy, we are with Jesus, and Jesus is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. We are joining the angels of heaven, all right? And we actually sing that, um, I think, pretty vividly in the Wilhelm Lue hymn. You know Wilhelm Lue? No, of course not. Noen Dettelsau, he's one of the founders of the Missouri Synod, but the least well-known um, founded the missionary congregations in Frankenmuth, Frankentrost, Frankenhilf, and Frankenlust, Michigan, right? You know those? And then also was responsible for what became the Iowa Synod, which later merged into different people, all right? Um, Wilhelm Lea, I have his picture in my office, because of all the Missouri Synod founders, he's the actual, only good-looking one. <laughs> Winnikin's not really a founder. I mean... He's the first like, missionary to the... Don't, don't pull all the sheets off, Dorothy. Um, anyway, Wilhelm Leia's hymn, Wide Open Stand, the Gates Adorned with Pearl. We sang that Wednesday night two weeks ago, probably? No. What? No. Maybe it was last week. Okay. Yeah. Why? Oh, after communion? No, last week we didn't. 
The We Adore O Hidden Savior was the first week. I'm trying to remember. doesn't matter. Uh, we sing it probably six to ten times a year uh, because, of what, because of, it says things that uh, it reinforces what we say elsewhere, right? Where it says, um, heaven under... Uh, I was just going to quote it, but my brain, brain wonked out on me. Does that ever happen to you? You just... All right, here's, listen, listen to the last stanza of it. It's 639, by the way. Um, the cherubim, their faces veiled from light, while saints in wonder kneel, sing praise to him whose face with glory bright no earthly masks conceal, unlike Moses, right? This sacrament God gives us binds us in unity, joins earth with heaven beyond us, time with eternity. Right? It's one of my favorite stanzas of any hymn, right? Because you get it, right? 639, wide open stand the gates. Uh, joins earth with heaven beyond us, right? Time with eternity. So we've talked about how in the divine service we are gathered with saints and angels and the whole host of heaven, but not by sight or by sense or by, right? But by faith, by faith. You are having a good time. You're not, it's not, as long as you're not, oh, you are distracting. Never mind. Okay, good. Um, anyway, this is really important for us um, because we've talked, have we talked about this architecture? I know my kids know, but the reason why our altars are the way they are, the historic ones, not the newfangled ones that people build. Have we? Oh, well, okay. Look, we have to talk about things more than once because that's how memory is formed. Okay. Right, seven times, right? So we have a table, right? We call it an altar, whatever, table, right? And then there's the, the castle-looking thing behind it, which is the rare dose, Latin, all right? And then you have altar rail, right? This is all since the renovation. You didn't used to have this, all right? And this, this is like the vision of heaven, right? You have Christ showing you the wounds, right? And then you've got the castle, basically. I mean, that's what it is, right? Yeah, it's the mansions that's been prepared for you. And you're seeing that behind, at, behind the table, right? What you're supposed to imagine, I didn't draw this in the right spot. I need, Dorothy, do you have another color? Is there another color in here? Ooh. Oh, that's a good color. Let's see what color this is. A box of black. All right, well, you just have to imagine. Oh, I'll do dotted lines. What you're supposed to imagine is that the table extends this and that the altar rail extends like this right but the idea no the idea is is that there's the visible gathering of the saints and then there's the invisible gathering of the saints right and that it's actually they're all gathered like in the vision here the lamb upon the altar right and then all the elders and all the people standing around the throne Right? And so you only get to see half of it. But that's why a lot of churches in like the Coppola. I was doing a master's program in architecture. I didn't finish it. Anyway, you know how we have that big dome over it? Is that then on the dome, what do you often see painted? Not in our church, but in many. Saints and angels gathered around the, the throne, the table, the altar. Have a good time, Dorothy. I might just throw them away this time. Okay. All right. So, in the picture here, this is by Albrecht Dürer. Have you heard of Albrecht Dürer? Here's one of the things that you might not know. The Reformation largely was spread by two means. Among the literate, it was, it was by the writings of Luther and, and the other reformers. and Because we, we, we had had a, the printing press for about 100 years, but it was really taking off. That was in like every village in town had one by this point, and they were look they they were looking for things to print. So Luther would write something, somebody would rip off a copy of it, set it for type, and print off a bunch of copies and start spreading these things. He didn't request it, he didn't ask for it, right? But they needed things to print, um, and especially since he wrote like pamphlet you know length things. It was it was perfect. Uh, so that's one way among the literate, but not a, a lot of people weren't literate at the time of the Reformation. Actually, a majority of people. That's why our churches were the first to found um, schools to teach the young. 
our churches, Lutherans. Nobody else was doing it, right? Because we wanted our young people to be able to study the scriptures, to read them. In, in. And of course, it has this secondary benefit is that you end up with pastors and other teachers who also can read. <laughs> it's just helpful. Now, don't play with the ancient Bible. That's not a good toy for you. That, that's, that's a keepsake for the church. I know, you look disappointed. All right. Um, so, give her a toy or something. Oh, well. You're so distracting, Dorothy. What were we talking about? And I got lost. Oh, yeah, Albert Durer. So the, but the other way the Reformation spread was through art. Um, because Durer, um, again, printing press, he would, he would do woodcuts that could then be, they could run off copies and copies and copies. So the children, they did like a whole illustrated Genesis. They had, um, they had woodcuts. I've seen a, a set of these, in, actually in France of all places, of the woodcuts for the catechism. So they taught each part of the small catechism with, with pictures. If you've got the, um, oh look, I actually have one here. The uh, Concordia Lutheran Confessions, this edition, in this middle, oh, no, it's not in the middle. Well, you can see a lot of the, the art. I'll pass this around. This was all Reformation era art to teach things. Like here's, here's the same guy, Cronach the Elder, but a, a color painting, and this is of, of Paradise, Genesis. Right? So here's another Cronach one. He, they had a whole illustrated Bible. So not only was it translated into German, but it had illustrations. Yeah, for the children. Oh, this is one of my favorites too, the creation. Yeah. But uh, that's all from this one studio in Wittenberg that Luther had. Now, where's the catechism woodcuts? Oh, here they are. Yeah. Yeah, so God creates the world, the fall into sin. I mean, they just, they taught, they taught the faith through. Because these things could be printed easily. Just, just keep running them off. All right, I'll pass that around. You can look at it. Um, anyway, this is a door, and this is, of course, of the Revelation. So you, what do we see here? Uh, where do you see the Lamb of God? Well, that's pretty easy. Sorry for the way it printed off, but you can see it's the crazy lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. Yeah, it's kind of strange, right? How about the four living creatures? You see those? Yeah, so we've got, it looks like we've got, what do we have? We have a bull and a lion. I, this is hard for you to see. A bird and then a man with wings, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dispute about this, but the traditional interpretation of the four living creatures are it's the four evangelists, right? And then um, I, I don't always get remember who represents who. The bull is Luke. Luke. The lion, Mark, right? He's not a tame lion, right? Then you've got the eagle, that's John, and the face, Matthew. Matthew. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see, seven horns, seven eyes. We talked about that. How about the blood of the lamb? You see what's happening there? What's going on with the blood of the lamb? Yeah, you've got a priest receiving it in a chalice, presumably to be distributed. Of course, there's kings and priests all around adoring the lamb. Sorry, again, it's kind of washed, or it's kind of oversaturated there. And you see all the people with the palm branches in their hands. Yeah, they're not the palm branch; they're the straight ones. Yeah, there's a lot to look at in that. Um, and then 10,000 times 10,000, that's pretty straightforward. There's just a lot of people. Um, you know how I knew it was a D Albert Durer? I didn't hear it. The yeah, you see the little AD? So that's how you'll identify it. That's interesting because he, he also dated his and like, he simultaneously signed it mm -hmm. and put the date because... Correct. Yep, Anno Domini, something, something. That's true. Yeah, so Durer is, is wonderful. It's, uh, I like to use images with children. Not because they're not literate, but you know, it's evocative, right? All right, let's talk about the new song, though. The, the reading from Revelation said that the people of God were singing a new song. What is the new song? It has. It has. It is. It has. It always will be. Always was and always will be a new song. Yeah. What is the new song? Say that again. Yeah, worthy is the lamb. Right? Of course, it's not the lamb that was sacrificed every year at the Passover. 
It's our Passover lamb. Christ, our Paschal lamb, right? Our Passover lamb. Mm-hmm. What was the memory verse? <laughs> it tells us to look it up. Oh, Lamentations 3. All right, maybe we should put that up on the screen. Rather than just picking and choosing, uh, 3 verse what? 22? Yeah, there you go. Though the Lord's mercies, mercies were not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Oh, you know the hymn. Great. Right? They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You don't know that hymn? You got to sing it with vibrato. It's kind of sappy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm, yeah, yeah. It's right here. Here it is. It's right here. Yeah. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, the soul who seeks him. Yeah. So you're supposed to memorize that. We have a lot, enough memory work to do. So, Lord's mercies, com- mercy, compassion are new every morning. That's the new song. The old song, what was the old song? Think of the law. This is law gospel talk, by the way. What does the law say? What did Moses say? Moses said, do this and you will live, right? Yeah, the law. Do this and you will live. All good, right? Except we don't do this. And so what does that mean? We don't live, we die. Yeah, but then notice what the people asked for. They asked for a... They asked, for some, they asked for Moses to veil his face. We talked about this in the congregation at prayer yesterday. To veil his face, to not talk to us anymore, and God says, you're right. So I'm going to send another prophet. And what's that prophet going to speak? Deuteronomy 18, it was our Old Testament reading today. He's going to speak this. He's going to speak tenderly. We can actually look upon Jesus' face and not be terrified because he speaks to us of grace and mercy and compassion. We don't want to look on the face of Moses, Right? I'll give you an analogy, you know, uh, who represents the law for us today? Police, the judge, right? Who of you is looking forward to the day where you have to stand before a judge? I mean, you're not guilty, hopefully. <laughs> if, you, if you are, you talk to me later, we'll confess and we'll take care of that. Day. What's that? Still day. Yeah, only... It's only terrible in a sense that it's terrifying for those still in their sins, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, there will be those on the last day. Ethan has a good point. There'll be those on the last day, like us, will look upon Jesus' face shining bright and will be like, "'Tis good, Lord, to be here," right? And then there'll be others who say, "'Veil your face, we can't stand it, because what is that light showing, revealing?' Their sins, that's right. Yeah. So veil that face. That's why they told Moses, don't talk to us anymore. <laughs> what, what you've said is impossible for us. It's too much to bear. And they're right. And God agrees with them. That's right. That's right. So there's, even at Sinai or Horeb, depending on what you want to call it, God is already saying to them, the faith that you have is not the faith of any of the religions around you, of any of your neighbors, where it's, do the right thing and God will save you. Here's the right thing. And they're all like, we can't even stand to listen to it. It's too much for us. And he's like, you're right. All right. So what you need from me is my steadfast, loving kindness, my mercy, my grace, my compassion. And that's the new song, right? Um, it's interesting because it's not even clear. This is, this is all completely pious opinion. All right. Got it? Pious opinion. Don't take this. Don't tell, you don't even have to tell anybody else this. Um, but I, I like the idea that the angels, when they were given to sing the glory in excelsis, they were as surprised as the shepherds were at the song. Yeah. They're like, whoa! God has made man and he's born. And the angels were freaked out too. As much as the shepherds were. And let's go see this thing. They were amazed, terrified. All the people were like, what's going on? Right? It's not that God hadn't promised a son that would be born, but did they know? They were watching. Okay, it's going to be on, uh, you know, AD 0 or 3 or BC or whenever it was, right? No. The only people who seem to have any clue as to when it would happen are the Magi, these 
these Babylonian kings who are looking at the stars, they're astrologers, right? Nobody else seemed to have any, any awareness that it was time, which is kind of interesting, yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. I like the idea that the angel, that's the reason why the angel, angel sang with such exuberance. They're like, ah, oh, finally, the, the promise made long ago is being fulfilled. Yeah, exactly. Of course, Mary knew, unlike the, the hymn. Mary, did you know? Yes, Mary, you knew. I prefer, I saw a parody and I thought the parody was better. Joseph, did you know? No, Joseph didn't. Right. All right. Anyway, um, good, 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 good. Turn the page. All right. What do we pray for just before the glory in excelsis that our verse speaks about? Mercy. According to this verse, does the Lord answer our prayer? Does he answer the prayer? He does good to those who wait for them. How often? Every morning. Does he ever fail to hear? No, he fails not. Good. All right. According to the glory in excelsis, you don't have a hymnal. Oh, no. Okay, you have it ingrained in your head. Everybody can look to Ethan. He says he knows everything. Um, according to the glory in excelsis, why does the Lord answer our prayer? What do you think? This is what I was telling you. It's two songs put together. It's the song of the angels with the song of John the Baptist. Right? It's also the, also the yeah, Agnus Day is in there too. We sing the Agnus Day twice. We sing it at the Lord's Supper. We also sing at the beginning with the angels, right? O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O, Lamb of, o Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who Thanks. takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, right? Why? Because you take away the sin of the world. That's the basis for your crying out for mercy, is that he's, he has and he does take away the sins of the world. And then we also have the stones of the purity well. Yeah, we talked about this last week, but since you have skipped out now for, you know, a few weeks. No, it's not your fault. We talked about this last week, how the beginning of the, divine, of the, of the service of the word and the service of the sacrament parallel. We do the same things again. The Kyrie and the prayer of the church are similar. Yeah. Right, and we talked about how if you weren't receiving the supper, see ya. You know, go, you know let's get you prepared and bring you back. All right, uh, let's see what's next. Why, do, or what does this passage say about the Lord's compassions? We already said that. They don't fail. Right? What is that? And there, or you could say that they're always new. They're always new. They're always new. New, new, new. Is there ever too much? Does he ever have too much compassion? Is there? Is there such a thing? <laughs> right? Or, or too many mercies? No. Too much forgiveness? I'm going to cut that forgiveness off because you keep abusing it, Ethan. But, but Psalm 23, our cup no, that's true. No, well, I'm picking on Ethan a lot. I'm sorry. But this is the key. This is the key because, you know, with children, the way that a father expresses the love of God the Father is by always forgiving. Right? I think when it's one of the... I know there's times where, where it just has to be done, when you have to cut somebody off, right? Um, but it needs to be in the way of the prodigal son. Like they say, I'm done with you. And you're like, okay. But we're always here for you. You're welcome back anytime, Right? Not the other way around, where the parent says to the child, you're not welcome here anymore. You know? I mean, maybe you have to go get them help or something. You know? Maybe they're, I don't know, pick something where they're not safe around you. Yeah, I mean, there may be, there may be a need to go to boot camp or something. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. But not willingly. I mean, yeah. It's always for the benefit. It's not, you don't ever, I've seen people disowned. And it doesn't bring them to repentance. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Because they don't believe, there's no repentance, as we talked about in the sermon briefly, we said on the congregation prayer yesterday, there's no repentance without the forgiveness of sins. If you just tell somebody repent, or just change your mind, or get better, and there's no absolution, there's no reason to, to, to say they're sorry. Right. Right. 
Right. And the goal of this is meant to realize that. Yeah. You may be able to say you can't live in my house anymore because it's not safe for, you, for us for you to be here, right? Uh, but it's even this with crying out for mercy. We can only cry out for mercy because we know that the Lord has had mercy on us in Jesus Christ. Without that knowledge, you'd be like, well, I hope he has mercy on me. What kind of hope is that? I wish he had, would have mercy on me. That's really what it ends up being, right? I wish I was saved. I wish I was saved. I hope I'm saved. When people say, I hope I'm saved, I always ask them the next question, why? How can you hope for such a thing? You went and grabbed a hymnal. Where'd you find the hymnal? Oh, you brought it. Oh, look at that. It's got a leather cover and everything. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not printed in your hymnal. Yes, the new hymnal did not print the proper preface. It only says, the pastor will chant something like this, and then it skips forward. I don't even, and I don't put it on the screen. The, yeah, with angels and archangels. The reason I don't put it on the screen is because then every week I would have to think about which one is supposed to be there this week. So if I just put, this, I just put the beginning and the end, and I figure, you'll just listen. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, they haven't changed. They haven't changed. Those are old, old, old. All right, so where are we talking about? How can we sing a new, the same new song every morning? Oh, this is boring. How can we sing a new song for eternity? Oh, heaven's going to be so boring. It's like the person who told me, I hate incense. I'm like, well, you're going to hate heaven then. <laughs> it's like, because I keep reading about them. I mean, all the elders with their bowls of incense, incense is, a, is the, the sign of prayer. It's, a, it's connected to prayers. So think we talked about this with Zechariah, right? What was he doing in the temple when the angel came to him? He was burning the incense at the time of prayer. He was offering prayers for the people. Yeah, anyway, they go together. Yeah, but oh, I'm allergic. All right, anyway. Uh, I'm joking, I'm not. Don't use too much, that's kind of the key. Someday you should watch the uh, video of San Juan Compostela. Do you know San Juan Compostela in Spain? It's a pilgrimage site. You walk all the way from Rome to San... It's this big church, but that's known for the... Think about it. If you've been walking for a couple weeks with a bunch of other pilgrims, what kind of condition would your bodily uh, be in? Yeah. So you walk into this church, and the, and the last thing is all the priests, they have, they have a sensor you know, for burning incense that's like... And it takes like six guys to get the thing swinging because they have to pull the the big chain and the thing is like swinging like 50 feet back and forth and there's incense billowing out everywhere i don't want to smell the pilgrims i totally get it i'd show you the video but i think my description is even more fun all right yeah right okay some people say that the songs we sing in the liturgy are old songs that we sing over and over again and they're correct the angels in heaven have been singing holy 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 forever and ever and it is still the new song how can this be The Lord is above time. Eternity is above time. There is no yesterday and today with God, but every moment is of one piece with eternity above time. Right? Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the the beginning and the end. Yeah. In this passage from Lamentations, still up there? Yeah, good. Yeah. The Lord's mercies are new every morning. Every day we sin, but every day the Lord's mercies are new. His compassion does not fail. His faithfulness towards us is great. Because the Lord's mercies are new every morning, we may sing a new song to him every day. Every day is like the day we were baptized. That's why we start each day in the name of the, yeah, the name given to us in baptism. Oh, by the way, Luther is right. Every day we start saying, keep me from sin. And every, at the end of every day we say, that you've graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins and graciously keep me this night. Yeah. So the beginning we say, keep me from sin. At the end of the day, we always say, forgive me for my sins. It's good. Every day we start fresh and new, and so every day we sing a brand new song to the Lord, even though we sang this new song just last week. What is the song? It is just as we have learned that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He hears our prayer and has mercy on us. It is a mystery indeed. All right. 
How are we doing on time? We got a few minutes. Let's look at some psalms. Some psalms. So, I don't know what time we started, but whatever. Oh, the kids aren't back yet. There we go. That's our cue. Not Psalm 3, Psalm 33. Not 3E, 33. There we go. Uh, 3 to 5. Rejoice in the Lord. There. Sing to him a new song. new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. This doesn't mean that the churches have to have, we can't sing old hymns anymore. We can only sing new ones, only contemporary hymns, right? It's talking about the content of the song. It's not the law, it's the gospel. All right, good. Play skillfully with a shout of joy, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. All right. So the question is, what are some, some reasons for singing an, uh, an, that's not right, singing a new song to the Lord here? Why? The word of the Lord is right, correct, correct. <laughs> all right. And all his work is done in truth. Actually is done. What he says, when he says it, it's as good as done even if you haven't yet experienced it. So he says, um, all who believe in me will never die, but shall live, right? Well, is that done yet for you? Resurrection of the body, life everlasting? No, but it's as good as done, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we have to work on the tree. Okay, he loves righteousness and justice. That's a hard thing, right? What is righteousness? Mm Mm-mm. Yeah, to do the right things, right? So, is Jesus, does he do the right things? Look, here they are. Yes. Does, does he, is he just? Yeah. But the righteousness and justice of God is not the, like the righteousness and the justice of this world. Okay, how are they different? For in this world, righteousness is doing the right thing. Justice is being you know, declare guilty or innocent depending on whether you did the right thing, right? What is righteousness and justice in Jesus? Righteousness is the forgiveness of sins, right? That his righteousness is that he makes you right with God by forgiving you your sins. What is justice for Jesus then? Connected to forgiveness of sins. Is there, is there justice for your sins? Is the punishment been meted out? Has the penalty been paid? Yes. yes. Right. So this is the problem. People say, well, it's not fair that all of God, you know, it's divine child abuse is what the atheists call this. It's not fair that God punished Jesus for all the sins. It's like, well, why would he? Parents know this. I look at Mike. Like you make a rule and then you never, you never, you know, enforce it. What good's the rule? Right. You're not actually just. You're unjust then. It's just vain threats. Right. God doesn't, they're not vain threats. He does punish sin. He does, he will, you know, throw the little ones against the rocks. You know, it's terrible. Right? But, there is, but, he, but he is good in that he has mercy and compassion for those who will receive the righteousness that, that Christ Jesus earned by his Uh, Precious suffering and death. I thought about mentioning, because this came up when we were talking about whose sandal I'm not worthy to unloose when we were talking about Ruth over the summer. Right? That's just a way of John saying, I'm not the redeemer. Who's the redeemer? Who's the kinsman redeemer? Jesus. Yeah. Only Jesus can loose the sandal and redeem the people. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And you you talk you talk about how yes um, God giving His Son um, for our sins that that was not just it was, it was very very shrewd but um, that's exact that's exactly what God God deals in seemingly unjust to us right. ways to save us 
That's correct. His justice, I mean, from us, justice looks like Santa Claus. I mentioned that on Wednesday night, right? If you're good, you get gifts. If you're not good, that's what we say. But in practice, everybody gets a gift. Yeah, whether you've been good or bad. It does. That's actually what we know. That's what we, that's what we secretly want, even though we threaten kids with the other. Can you imagine? Yeah. Esther, this year, your gift is a lump of coal. Have fun. I know exactly what you do. You're going to take it out in the driveway, and you're going to use it to draw on the driveway. All right. Uh, let's do one more, or at least one more. We could probably do one more. Psalm 40. The kids haven't imploded yet. Yeah, Psalm 40, a Psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. Oh my, there we go. Saw that coming. Out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song, there it is, in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. All right. So what's the question? What has the Lord done for us? What has he done for us? I'm I'm trying to give you a hint, Esther. What am I doing? Right. No, he hears. Yeah, he he inclined his... And he heard my cry. I love this example. Um, the miry, the miry clay. What is that? It's like it's quicksand, right? Yeah. Like, have you ever tried to? This was like when I was at um, the Field of Dreams Museum, <laughs> and it had rained the night before, but I really wanted to replicate, you know, Shoeless Joe walking out, and so, and I had, I had my sandals on, and I was walking through the cornfield. <laughs> That's, that, that's the miry clay. It's like, I don't, don't think my... Sh- they were just like, my feet were just covered in this mud. Yeah. The horrible pit. Set my feet upon a rock and establish my steps. Right? So that we can walk confidently. That's the difference, right? If you're trying to slog through something, you're like, yeah, whatever, I'll give up. Right? But if you're on rock, and if he gives you the steps, you can do it. What was the second question? Oh, who has given us the new song? This connects well to the sermon today, right? Did you have to make it up? Nope. Yeah, you put it in your mouth. Say, here, this is what you should sing. Right? Sing this. Sing this. It's beautiful. We have like 150 uh, songs to sing, at least. Right? They're called the Psalms. <laughs> Uh, there's more on new song, but that's probably a good place to go. Uh, look at the very end. That is not a door, by the way, at the bottom. But this is actually, this is an altarpiece. I think it's in Eisenheim, if I remember right. This, this, so this would be behind the altar on the Rarados. Can you imagine? You go up to Lord's Supper and you're like, I'm distracted. That's really amazing. Yeah. We begin learning about the name of the Lord, and we end talking about that name again. We have learned all the good things that the Lord has done through his name. We are forgiven. We are given eternal life. We are made saints, priests, and kings before the Lord, and we're saved from the curse. Truly, we would give glory to God for all his benefits to us. We have already given glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at the end of the intro, and now we give him glory again in the glory in excelsis. All right? And then it asks, what prophecy is fulfilled in Psalm 89. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. You have broken Rahab in pieces as one who is slain. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Ooh, pretty intense, right? Yep, it is 86, because that's not, that is not re- related to what we're talking about. Thanks, Ron. I was, I was right with you. I was a little behind. There we go. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. Sorry. 
All nations whom you have made shall come, there it is, shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Right? So think of that revelation reading we had at the beginning. All peoples, tribes, nations, languages, and tongues. And there's the seven, right? The se- there's seven things. And you're thinking of this as the feast, right? Worthy is the lamb. I'm trying to think. It's the last stanza of this is the feast that sings about the, the seven things. Power, glory, dominion. Oh, that's like, that's like the or second or fourth. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but all nations will come and glorify the Lord's name. Remember, what is it to glorify? We could say magnify. That would be another good way to say it. Right? Glory is, is a light word. Right? So it's to shine the light on. Right? So this is what you're going to be doing all week with Christmas, right? is glorifying what the Lord has done by repeating it, singing about it, right, proclaiming it. And this is fulfilled by us each week when we sing the, the glory in excelsis. Glory be to God on high and on earth. Peace, goodwill among men. We praise thee. We were, see, see, we're glorifying. We're revealing what God has done. Thank you. Oh, man. I thought you were going to take a nap. She's taking steps, if you didn't notice. She'll stand for a while. Last night it was one, two, three, four. Oh, here you boy. That's pretty much it. All right. Good. Gloria. Uh, so then the next time we get to start the next part of the service, right? Which comes with the... What comes next? I turn and face you and say... The Lord be with you. Right. And you say, and with thy spirit. Or... And also with you. Which way is it today? I don't know. I'll have to just read what it says on the screen. <laughs> All right, good. We'll talk about that next time, though. Not now. Of course, not next Sunday. Yeah, two weeks, right? That'll be January 2nd. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. If you show up, I'll have class. How's that? That's how we work it. All right, let's close with prayer. Lord, you have revealed to us uh, your mercy and compassion uh, for us in Jesus Christ. The song, in, and also then in the song that the angels sang, um, we ask that you would give us to sing with joy again on uh, Christmas of your, Savior's, your son, our Savior's birth, uh, to whom is honor and glory and power and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>